So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. Okay, I got a new graduate of the CBA, the Certified Buyer Agent course on Rebus University, Jose Navarro, an excellently detailed presentation. Thank you, five stars. Guys, Certified Buyer Agent, over 11 hours of content on how to close more buyers every day. Incredible, most in-depth course out there on buyer agency and dealing with buyers available and it's seven bucks for seven days if you go to futureofrealestatetraining.com keep the comments coming guys i love them and remember i eat feedback for breakfast so give me a one star review if you want or a five star review if you want i don't care and the more reviews we get the better guests we get so please subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, got a great uh, guest today uh, from College Station, uh, Texas, Mr. Terrence Murphy with tm5 properties and uh, uh he is crushing it out in texas and we're gonna get in some deep deep discussion about uh how his agents uh per agent productivity is so high and uh, uh what he's doing to service his clients and what he's doing to grow not just one company but eight companies so without further ado terrence welcome to real estate rock stars Man, thanks for having me, man. I've been listening to your show uh, for probably four or five years, faithfully. Um, and it's always on my commute to the office. It gets me pumped up. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to be on the show. And thank you for everybody who's been on the show and Pat, all, everything that you do for real estate, um, you know, network and career path. So I really appreciate everything. Oh, that's awesome, dude. I appreciate the assertive appreciation. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Why don't you um, give everybody a little background on you, uh, Terrence, so uh, they get to know you better. Yep. So born and raised in East Texas. Um, came to Texas A&M University, played football here. Had a really solid career uh, for the Texas A&M Aggies. Uh, got drafted in the first two rounds of the NFL draft for Green Bay Packers. Um, after I retired, I ended up having an injury my rookie year and retired. Came back, started developing investment properties, uh, new construction, urban development, and got my license and just really fell in love with real estate, started growing in multiple companies, multiple income streams, and uh, just loving, just loving it. So uh, to list out your companies or list out the ones that are profitable. Yeah, I hope they're all profitable. <laughs> <laughs> So it's easy yeah. to have a million LLCs. So you know. I know, right? Right? Yeah. So our one main one, uh, we have entities that hold our rental properties. My wife and I own about 250 um, uh, properties here in College Station, you know, student housing, which a and is probably one of the biggest universities in America. Our main one that people know is T and 5 Properties. That's our brokerage. And um, we have it right at 35 people. We try to keep it really small and boutique. And, um, you know, we're number one independent every year in our market, and we're top three out of 220 firms in our MLS, um, and really growing that one. Um, we have an insurance firm now that we just partnered with, a property management uh, team now, department. Um, also have a rental locator, and so we're just growing it. We're working on a title company and a mortgage company right now. But, yeah, just trying to grow it all in vertical integration. Or one of the words that I've always studied is intentional congruency. Intentional congruency. I love it, dude. Yeah. I love it, dude. So, uh, so you got injured, right? And that, uh, uh, tell me about that. Yeah, man. So I get drafted, you know, every young man's dream in America to get drafted in the NFL, got, you know, got my name called and for a great organization like the Green Bay Packers. And I'm playing with Brett Favre. I'm starting, I'm doing well. Aaron Rodgers actually, we got drafted together and now he's going to end up being a Hall of Famer. Um, but he was my roommate. Me and A-Rod were best friends. I was a receiver. He was a quarterback, so it made sense. And um, I'm actually doing really well, man. And um, number two in the NFC behind Steve Smith. 
and just had a freak accident happen, wasn't even a hard hit, and got injured and had a neck injury. And I went back and just went back to the drawing board. I said, okay, I was a great athlete, but I was three-time academic all-conference while at a and So I said, I could come back and play because the same injury I had paid Manny had, he had the surgeries and came back. I just decided I'm done. And uh, my biggest prayer was, God, give me something that I could um, be passionate about, and that's what led me to real estate. So it's kind of, it probably was a blessing in disguise because then you kind of had a chip on your shoulder. You wanted to prove to everybody that you, you know, you weren't a one hit wonder. You didn't peak right at 23, right? (laughs) And that you got a lot more in you. And, uh, and, and, and you, you, did you jump right into real estate out of, uh, out of uh, the Green Bay Packers? I did. Uh, I had already graduated. I came back to start doing some postgraduate work, maybe getting my master's at Texas A&M. And actually, the dean of the program came to me. She was letting me audit some of her classes. And she said, Terrence, you know what? You just need to go out and do it. And most intellectuals are encouraging you to get 19 degrees, right? Right. She's like, you just need to do it. Terrence, come teach her. (laughs) She's like, you just need to go do it. And so I was like, well, great. And I just went out and I just started blazing the trail. And, uh, and then uh, you got your license, you put it with a, with a brokerage for about a year and a half, right? And then you just said, screw this, I'm going to start my own company. Yeah, you know me, I'm, like you said, um, not, not only one hit wonder, I've always had a chip on my shoulder. When I came to Texas a and I was a two-star recruit from East Texas that I wasn't a five-star guy. You know, I grew up with a strong mom that was really you know, smart and hardworking, a single mom, actually. And she taught me a lot of grit. So from that, you know, I was at uh, a brokerage or franchise in our town, and um, I did seven deals for one point two million my first year, which 2010 was a tough year to get get into real estate. Oh well, yeah, yeah. But it taught me how to produce in a tough market. So after being there doing seven deals, I would go to them and I'd say, "I need more coaching. I need more help." And when I didn't get it, I found a loophole in the two year rule, and I found an attorney to hold my license and started my brokerage. So I didn't have a brain. I didn't have a broker. No website, no training, and I blazed out there and started a broker from scratch. That's awesome. And uh, now you got what, what did you say, 40, 35 agents? 35 of us, that's including staff. And I think what really, the light bulb went off for me is after leaving that first year, I grew my business with no, I didn't buy any leads, so I worked no leads, and I jumped from 1 million in sales to I did, you know, 78 deals for 21 million. And I'm like, wow, in one year, I went from a $1 million agent to a $21 million agent. Holy dirt, really? From 2010 yeah. to 2011, you went from seven deals to 78. 78 deals. And, and, and okay, so, well, let's, okay, so let's talk about some nitty gritty. So you, right now, you still sell real estate on your team, right? Yep, so I own the brokerage, which is TM5, and I have other agents that are there producing, and I'm coaching them. I'm personally coaching them, personally growing them. But, I, you know, I'm still actually the number one agent in my market. So in the BCS Central Texas area, I sell more real estate than anybody here. So I still produce, and that's really with me being a part-time agent. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about this. So your team last year, last, say, last 12 months, how many houses did you sell? So I do 100 to 150 every year. My best year I, uh, was in 2017. I did 169 houses. 169 homes. And then what, what was your, we like to call ECI, as you know on the show, <laughs> ego commission income. Last 12 months, what was your uh, ECI? 1.2 on my personal team. Um, and then obviously the brokerage was 3.5. Okay. And then on the one, two, what was your profit margin on that? I'm trying to work on that. I'm still in the mid twenties, you know, it depends 23 to 28%, you know, trying to get into that 30%, but I feel like it's right at market. About 300 grand you pulled out of there. Yeah. 300, 400 grand on my personal team. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's still good. And then, and then, and then, then your brokerage. Now tell me about your um, per agent productivity, 39 houses average per agent productivity. That's like unheard of, right? You're bound to have, you know, out of 39 agents or 35 agents, you're bound to have at least half of them selling, you know, one to two houses a year. How do you do that? Well, I think the biggest thing is we have a rental locator team attached to it. So that's some leases in there, but most of them are sales. It's usually 60, 40 sales versus leases. But I think what we've done is we really focus on quality. And most of my agents, none of them came from other brokerages. So our motto at TM5 is where top producers are made. So I actually, in my seven years of running TM5, I haven't hired one top producer from another brokerage. So everybody we've grown, uh, Kendra Hudson's probably been my best um, 
you know, protege or someone I've coached for seven years. She was at three different brokerages in town. She's done 1.5 million. And now she's a $40 million agent. So she wow. got to 35 million. And so I'm number one in the whole market. She's number four. So we're in the, we're two of the top four agents in the market. So what we do is to keep that average high is we really focus on hiring two to three agents at a time. I'm not out just beating the doors down recruiting. And when I bring people in, I onboard them and I personally coach them. And we have a very strategic system that honestly I based off of my Texas A&M and Green Bay days. Like we call it off season, right? So our season is very cyclical. So from January to August, because of the professors and the students, that's our selling season. Okay, but, wait a minute. Let me, let me slow this down. So, so like a lot of the people, what, what percentage of the houses that you sell are employees uh, or students of Texas A&M University? I'd say um, a third, a third of our business. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then probably another third would be investors because, you know, we got so many students here. Our campus is 5,200 acres. And so we get a lot of Aggie parents. Game day, you know, we have the biggest stadium in the state. We got 107,000 people that come watch football on the weekends. So that just draws a lot of people. People just buy condos and stuff like that just to stay in them for the weekend. There you go. Yep. Or, you know, let's say their, their daughter comes to A&M. The rent's really high here. So instead of paying the rental rate, they'll go and say, let me get a, let me get a house, put my daughter in one room, and then I'll rent out the other rooms. So, and we have a niche for that. And we have a strong niche for doing those. That's awesome. Okay. And um, so let's talk about your business. Uh, what percentage of your team business there is listings versus buyers? So, yep, so on my team business, uh, I'm really 70% listings. You know, I don't really work a lot of buyers on my per at this point in my career. You know, in 2017, 18, I did right at 50, you know, 2017, I did 56 million in total sales volume as a, you know, a four-man team. Um, and we really focus on listings because I was listings are leverage, you know. And then the only leads I really work is if I get signed calls. Everything else that comes into the brokerage, I sign out to my agent. So I sign out about 3,500 leads a year um, just off the back end. Just off, just off a listing, um, your listings? My listings and our website. So our website um, is hitting, uh, we just hit about 4 million page views. Uh, so we're getting crazy traffic to a mom and pop local brokerage. And how are you doing that? I think the biggest thing in the beginning when everybody was so focused on billboards and real estate books and spending Facebook ads, I trained my agents on how to go hunt. That's our number one thing we say. Oh, how to what? What did you say? Go hunt. Go hunt. hunt. Okay. Yep. So we always say at TM5, eat what you kill, right? So if you don't go out and hunt it, you don't eat. And so really growing my agents and teaching them how to organically go and get listings. Because if you come to our market, I guarantee you, every time that we hire a new agent, the first thing they say they hear from everyone is we see all signs everywhere. So we really uh, paint the town maroon, white, and yellow with our signs because we, we dominate the listing side. Why waste thousands of dollars and countless hours on training that never touches on what matters most? How to make more money in real estate. For just $7, you can start a one-week trial at Rebus University today. And what that means is $13,000 worth of real estate courses on how to make more commissions will be available to you for a dollar a day. It's all you can eat. Go in there and take them all if you can. Only seven bucks. To start your seven-day all-access free trial, Go to futureofrealestatetraining.com. These courses are guaranteed to get you more listings, more leads, and more commissions. Futureofrealestatetraining.com or just text the word TRIAL to 444-999. That's T-R-I-A-L to 444-999. And yeah, I mean, that's a ton of leads. You know what I mean? Like coming, coming from your website, it's almost like you don't submit the Zillow and stuff. Like, I mean, do you still do, do you still do that? I do. Uh, I think, yeah, our top referring uh, website uh, on our Google Analytics report is our social media. So wow. between okay. all of our social media, we got about, between me and the company, I have about 50,000 followers and leveraging that to really, and we were one of the, I was one of the first agents in our market to do professional photography, 
uh, and videography and really just kind of get out there with that modern techniques and contemporary techniques. Oh, that's cool. So you parlayed like a little bit of your fame from the university or your fame from the university and getting drafted and all that into right away into real estate. And then, and now people kind of watch you. Yeah. You know, the, the crazy thing is I, I missed that whole window in the NFL of having 200,000 followers because you play in the NFL. So I actually missed that. So all my 50,000 followers plus are all organically grown now that I'm in, you know, a real estate broker. But the cool thing, you know, I, I really tried to hide behind the brokers. That's why I didn't do Terrence Murphy and Associates or I just did TM5. It was very simple, but it's crazy because now if you look at it, Keller Williams, Century 21, they're all now simplifying their logos to a three letters or two letters. Yeah. And we've been doing that for, for 70 years. And what's the five? The five is my class year at Texas A&M. That's a big deal around here what year you graduate. But it was also my football number at Texas A&M. Um, and then it's our foundational scripture, Matthew 5, at our company and a lot more. So five is a big number for me, so the TM5. Nice. Nice. Okay, good stuff. All right. So um, let's talk a little bit about your investing. I mean, you and your wife, you know, you went crazy, right? I mean, you, 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 I mean, which is great. You got 250 rentals, did you say? Yeah, 250 beds. So, uh, okay. yeah, 250 beds. Yeah. Yeah, we count beds. It's a weird, it's a weird thing here because everybody's like, what do you rent by the bed? So that's just kind of a local market and thing. You charge, do you charge students by the bed? Are you allowed to do that or do you have to charge by the house? We, we say by the house, so our average house leases for between 3000 and 4000 a month. Nice. And then and, uh, where do they get five or six bedrooms for that? Yeah, four to five bedrooms. And so how many houses is that? 60 houses. 60 houses? Yeah, 60 houses. Would you just start buying up everything around Texas A&M? <laughs> I did. The crazy thing is when I first got back, when I was in college at 21 years old, I had no money, obviously. But I would always say, because our practice field is right across the street from a neighborhood, and I would tell my teammates, like, man, if somebody would go in and buy that and clean it up, man, it would do really well. And when I was, you know, my roommate dated a, a young lady on a soccer team, and I would hear her and her roommates arguing about beds, beds and baths, because it was like four bed, two baths. So they'd be arguing about who's using the bed. And I came back, I started buying these houses close to campus, I started tearing them down. And I was one of the first guys to say, okay, if it's a three bed, do a three bath. If it's a four bed, do a four bath. And man, it, it just kind of blew up. It just went so crazy. You tore them down and built uh, something new. You were like a developer almost. Exactly. Urban development. Yep. Yep. I, I, I went in early trying to remodel these old 1950 houses with pier and beam and you pour a slab and it's moving. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to tear these things down and build them brand new. And I really, that's what really started the TM5 brand before I even got my license. I used to get so many calls of people asking me, can you help me do what you're doing? I see your rental signs. I was like, I don't have a license. And that's what led me to get my real estate license. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. So how, you know, I've got a bunch of houses at University of Maryland myself and um, a few of them uh, struggled last year because they're building so many high rises and new dorms. Like they're just trying to take over the market. They're just knocking, knocking down old liquor stores or knocking down a gas station and building like, you know, you know, a, a, a huge high rise with a thousand units in it. Do you guys got the, any issues with that? It's getting a little saturated for us. I think the one thing that I focused on and I, all my investors that I sell to, cause I now, you know, I really focus on investors is a one mile radius of campus. You say again? One mile radius of campus. One mile radius. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to walk. Yeah. You got to be able to walk. And I always say, if you can't see Kyle field from your, you know, front yard, then you're too far out. So just really stay close. Closer yeah. the better. I agree with that. Yeah. And this worked well. I mean, even in 2008, 9, and 10, when the market was down everywhere in the United States, this area around campus still appreciated at double digit rates. Jeez. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. It was recession proof at that time. I don't know about this next yeah, one coming. Well, you know, colleges usually are. You know what I mean? I mean, people plan 10 years in advance to go to college, or let's say parents plan. 10 years in advance, they start saving 10 years in advance. It's not usually one of those things where like, oh, had a bad year, you know, you can't go to college. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's been a good deal, man. You know, and that's where I feel like if my model works here in this, in this town, you know, our average sales price is 250000 245000 We're putting up, you know, we just hit $600 million in sales in less than seven years with 20 to 25 agents. 
I know if I can get this model down right, I can scale it around the state of Texas. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about that model. First of all, on the listing end, like how are you getting listings? Like how, how, right now, how many listings do you have? 40 to 45 is usually what I keep. All right, so you got 45, 40 listings, right, that you have on the market mm -hmm. with your signs up all around the same area. How did you get those? Me personally, um, Spirit of Influence now past clients, but one of the things that I've really built is in the beginning when I was an investor, I used to ride around that area and I would call signs. And by the time I would speak to them, they'd be like, it's already under contract. So I was like, well, dang, how am I going to ever get an investment if it's by the time you put the sign out, it's sold. And I realized, and like the light bulb went off, you got to know the right people. So when I got my license, I said, well, I just want to create something for what I was looking for when I was an investor. So I, I call it pocket listings. And I have a spreadsheet. It's a Google Doc. Um, and because we have our rental locator, our rental locator in 2012, we started it from scratch with like 20 houses on our portfolio. Now we're up to 850 houses that we lease every year. Well, I just keep in touch with those owners that we're leasing. And hey, if you ever want to sell, let me know. And then that keeps me an influx of investment properties that you won't find on Zillow or Realtor.com or anything. So it's just automatic value. And none of those listings are on the market. That's awesome. And, um, and, 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 and like, what like how many listings would you say you got that way? On that spreadsheet, I keep 75 to 100 listings at a time. Wow. Okay. Um, and, and it's real. It's, I mean, it's proprietary to me. And in the beginning, I used to share it with my agents and then they would share it with an investor and he would share it with someone else. But now I keep that pretty close to my best. Well, it's a great way if you're talking with buyers, you know what I mean? Like uh, we talk about that in our certified buyer agent course, where if you, if you have these off market homes, that's, you can scoop up a buyer off of a phone call lickety split with that, you know? Every time. And the cool thing is they'll call me on one of my signs near campus um, but then I'll tell them, Hey, if this doesn't work, I have 60 to 75 to hundred other properties that could fit what you're looking for. And now you don't have to compete with everybody else in the market. So it's been, it's just been an automatic value proposition when people call me and now we're known for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Terrence, there's this old saying and it says, uh, capitalism without bankruptcy is like Christianity without hell. <laughs> And so you got eight business, you're a capitalist, uh, you, you, you like doing and expanding things. What, what are some lessons, some failures that you've had um, in your growth of, of all these companies um, that maybe we can learn from and, and save time? Yeah, one of the things that I've learned is systems, procedures, and key performance indicators. Um, really following that systems procedures and key performance indicators. Okay. Talk to me about that. Yep. So on the systems, I learned that as long as I'm involved, I'm having to manage it. I'm having to stay on top of it and I can ensure that you're going to get a five-star experience. But now as we've scaled, I have to really focus on the systems and the checklist and what are we doing to make sure just like, you know, I really studied uh, McDonald's and these food chains no matter if you're in New York or if you're in Texas, when you go to McDonald's or Starbucks, you expect the same type of latte coffee, right? And they got a very specific, like I studied McDonald's, they even have on their policy manual where to put the pickles. Yeah, on it's the, crazy, right? You know, and so really just making sure that we're doing that at TM5. And that's where we, we don't play around in our brokerage. Like if you get here and you're complaining and you're whining and you're making excuses and you don't want to work, then this isn't the place for you. Plenty of people make a decent living selling real estate, but how many manage to make millions to become a millionaire? Imagine how much more profitable your business would be if you had the chance to learn from someone who actually made their millions selling real estate. Rebus University instructors know what it takes to build a highly successful, highly lucrative real estate business because they've done exactly that. These self-made real estate millionaires spent years in the trenches identifying exactly what works in today's markets. And that's exactly what they teach. Right now, we're running a seven-day trial on Rebus University's all-access package. 
for just $7, you can get access to every course. Every millionaire real estate instructor, there's over 40 of them, 40 millionaire real estate instructors that Rebus University has to offer. You have access to all of them. To start your seven day free trial for only seven bucks, go to futureofrealestatetraining.com. That's futureofrealestatetraining.com. Or text TRIAL, T R I A L, to 444 999. That's TRIAL to 444 Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode, or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. And, and so in the beginning, you didn't have these systems is what you're saying, and stuff started falling through the cracks. You started hearing it from clients started getting fired, that sort of thing. And you're like, okay, let me fix it. You know, I used to have a mentor that says, don't, don't focus on people, focus on systems. Yep. You know, what really hit me is when I had a lady that I trained personally and spent a lot of time with, and when she ended up moving away and then I hired two people trying to replace her and the service, it was just so inconsistent. That's when I realized early in my career, that if I don't focus on the systems, it's not really who's behind the model. It's, it's the model that they have to, in order to operate and create something consistent. So what, what systems do you like to use? What software, apps? Let's talk a little bit about technology and what's keeping everything together and helping you do a better job. Yeah, so obviously Google Docs is where everybody probably, everybody's went through that progression. Uh, we started in the beginning trying to put stuff on spreadsheets, but if you give Pat a spreadsheet, and then you edit it and don't send it back, now you lose that communication. So that's where Google Docs helped me earlier in my career. Um, but the thing now that I will tell you that I'm really spending time on is Trainual. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, what is it called? Train what? Trainual. So train and manual in one word. No, never heard of this. Trainual. Okay, do tell. Yep. It, it really helps um, from a scaling ability. I'm still new to it, but I'm really excited about it. And, you know, you can make sure that, you know, it's got some cool integrations. So Loom video, have you heard of Loom video? Yeah, Loom. We've used Loom and basically you record your screen so you don't have to pick up the phone or explain to something. You want to explain something like a third grader can understand it, especially for like a virtual assistant in the Philippines or something or really anybody. You want to just make sure they don't miss a beat on how to do something. You just do a Loom video showing them and you send it, right? Perfect. So we take Loom videos, our Google Docs, our KPI checklist, and we kind of integrated it all into that one system. So it's all in a one-stop shop. Another tech thing that I'm using that's new is ClickUp.com. So ClickUp, so kind of like ClickUp. Yeah. And it's a, it's a task management software, man. It's been amazing. What, tell me how it works. So when it, when it comes to, you know, running multiple brokerages or multiple companies and, you know, people tell me, man, you're doing a lot, but I wouldn't have it any other way, um, is when you get on there, you can assign out these tasks and the functionality is amazing because, you know, you can set deadlines, you can flag it for priority. Is it, you know, high priority? You can put due dates on it. You can add in multiple people from the staff. You can even put people, like if you have a manager, who's overseeing the project, you can make them just a watcher. And then it sends you these updates and they have tasks like they can change it. Oh, it's pending or oh, here's the update. And then I can reject it. If it's not done right, I can reject it and send it back and say, hey, you left this out on the checklist. You know, do this back. And so now my inbox, you know, I'm 300 emails a day. It's really kind of helping me get down all the responses back and forth on Google, on Gmail about if the task is done or not. Yeah, that's great, man, because there's nothing worse than having to bug somebody. And the funny thing about our minds, at least about my mind, is if I don't hear like a done or I can't see that it's done, I assumed it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot in common, man. Yeah, that's the same thing. Like, and, and you know, that's been my biggest deal is I could train the heck out of you, 
but my weakness is follow up. Like, like, I, it's like one of the things my wife always tells me is you're training people like they're you. Cause I'm the type of guy, tell me what I need to do and get out of the way. I'm gonna get it done. But so I can train people, but this is really helping me with the accountability piece. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, cool. All right. So let's switch to buyers. Like, um, so not you, I know you don't do a lot of buyers yourself, but what about your agents? Like what, what, uh, what are their sources of buyers? So we get a lot of sign calls. Like I talked about earlier, just because yeah. so many signs, so many signs out. So you, think that, you think that they just assume since you have so many signs that they're like, you know, I'm going to call on this sign instead of look it up online because I figure that if he doesn't have, if this one is sold, he'll have other ones. There you go. And, and that's, that's what we've been known for in our market, you know. Because you know, a lot of people don't get that many sign calls. You know what I mean? People don't pick up the phone and call as much as they did. But I think if they're thinking in the back of their mind, well, let me see if Terrence got something else, you know, or some more things, they're going to do it. You know, when everybody got into adding the QR codes to their sign, yeah. Yeah. I was one of the people in 2009, 10, 11, and I rejected that. I said, no, I'm not doing that. That's stupid. I got to get out of the car, get up and go scan it. I said, I would just much rather have my cell phone on there so then I can capture their information and actually they're talking to a real person. Right. So I think that when and a, a lot of people in our market went to those QR codes and I felt like while they were doing that, we were putting our cell phones on there. Cause another thing too is our, like in our market, the brokers put their company number on it. And when I was at Keller Williams, you know, we were forced to do four time as new agents. Well, when they call in, they want to talk to Pat about his $500,000 listing. They don't want to talk to Terrence, a guy who just got his license two weeks ago. And so when you're doing floor time, you're trying to run and scramble and get the information. It just looks unprofessional. So that was one of the first things I went against the grain is I was like, I put that on all my, when people came to interview with me, I said, no floor time. I would say floor time is you're just a glorified receptionist and you right. don't get paid minimum wage. And, 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 and so, but do you have, how do you ensure that your agents are following up right? So we have a CRM, you know, and there's so many different ones out there. Oh yeah. You know? 8 million. Yeah. And like, you know, Tom Ferry always used to say is there's no perfect CRM, the one that you'll use. So right now we have real estate webmasters as our back end CRM. Okay. And now it's been, it's been solid. I mean, I wish it had some more functionality, but it's been solid. I'm, I'm looking at some Boomtown stuff. I'm looking at Commission Inc. Um, all the ones you hear out there just for the back end CRM. Cause that will tell you, that's the one thing that I feel like I need to get better at is lead conversion because my agents get so many leads and so really getting them to value them. So I'm literally meeting this week and I'm creating a lead team and I'm going very black and white on what the expectations are. And there's going to be a one, two strike three, you're out. And if you don't do what we asked and you're off the leads. So you're going to put them on like a, almost like an Uber or Lyft, you know what I mean? Where it goes to them. And if they don't respond within a couple of seconds, it goes to the next one, like a round Robin. A round Robin with some high accountability. So it was really high accountability. So I'm assigning the lady. She's like an ISA, but she won't make the first call. So I want them still making the first call because I tried that where I had a lady working full time making the first call. And because she, you know, it's just they want to talk to an agent. So right. that's what I'm trying to make. And, they, and a lot of times they call at 730 at night or Saturday. And, you know, you should take the Rebus University's uh, certified ISA manager course. Um, I'm down now. Yeah, ISA manager. It's uh, or have her take it, um, or both of you guys take it. It's uh, it'll 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 tell you. It's it's done by two of the top ISA trainers in the world. So uh, so that'll be good stuff. Awesome, bro. All right. So what are you training, uh, Terrence, your agents to do today to drastically increase their production? What's new and exciting that you're doing? You know, it's kind of like I always tell people. It's like sports. It's like fundamentals. Like if you go out and you watch Tiger Woods and you want to be the best there's only so many things you can do to change the way you play the game of golf, right? So unless you and I come up with some new way to hit the ball and you got to stand over it and you got to swing back and you swing forward and you hit it. That's how I train my agents on fundamentals. It's, you know, let's just focus on the fundamentals. And one of the biggest things that I've realized as I've traveled, and, you know, I was at Inman yesterday um, and other different networks, no one talks about time blocking. And, you know, as a student athlete, they literally had our schedules booked from 6.15 to 10 every day. 
I there was <laughs> there was no downtime. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Student athletes, yeah, it's tough. But what it taught me was how to time block and really focus on that. How do I how do I get as much out of the day as possible? And I really focus my agents on lead generating. So I tell them, is this a lead generation activity? Is this an income producing activity? Because, you know, agents, they're running around and they're working on their CRM and they're working on a postcard and they're on social media and they think they're working. But then they look at their pipeline and there's nothing, there's nothing there. And I always tell them because you were not focusing on income producing activities. So I always tell everybody, be real with yourself. Look at your sources of business from the last 12 months. And wherever that source is, either add another spoke on the wheel or go and put more eggs in the basket on driving it home to, you know, you know focus more on income producing, you know, activities. Yeah, absolutely. I call them in my book, I call them um, dollar productive activities. And basically meeting face to face with someone to talk about listing their house, meeting face to face with a buyer, showing them a house or writing a contract, negotiating offers. And number four, <clears throat> which is probably primary, would be prospecting for new business, like building your off-market list. You know what I mean? Like picking up the phone, picking up your phone and texting as many people as you can and, and following up with as many people as you can, uh, you know, all, in all formats. Yeah, and to even tap into that, and I read your book too, Pat. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, one of the things I always tell my agents is they always want to go to – the easy thing to do is text the lead when they get it. So I tell them, call, call, call. And then when they're dealing with an agent or when they're dealing with a client, handwritten letters. You know, handwritten letters have become, you know, old school. But, man, we really focus on phone calls and handwritten letters because there's still a personable touch into it. You know, now when you're doing a deal with an agent, you can't get them on the phone. They're too busy. They want to text back the counter. And for me, I train my agents on. We, people want to still deal with people. And so we really focus our training on time blocking and making sure that they're doing it themselves and everything isn't so automated. No, absolutely. I love it. I love it. All right, Terrence, let's wrap this up with our flagship question. And that is this, let's say I took you and I put you with nine other agents, <clears throat> right? And I'm going to put you way back to the beginning. So you got to use the skills that you used, you know, right when you, you know, left the Packers. So, you know, um, I'm putting you with nine other agents and I'm giving you each a thousand dollars, a cell phone, a laptop. And the, the thing that you all have in common is you don't know anybody. So I'm putting you in an area where there's a lot of commerce, people are buying and selling houses, but you don't know a soul. Now your goal is to beat these nine other agents by selling more houses than them. And if you sell more houses than them, you get a grand prize of $5 million after six months. How are you going to sell more houses than these nine other agents? <laughs> well, first off, I would commit to knowing I'm going to win no matter what. So I always tell people in success, you have to burn the bridge. So there is no... You know, I may win this. I might win it. You know, when when we, you know, when a lot of times when people came across on the water and discovered America, like they burned the bridges. They they knew that this was it. They're going to make it work. So that's the first thing I would do. The second thing I would do is I would go into MLS. I would pull the type of units that sold the most, right? So what's most competitive? Is it condos? Is it new construction? Is it new builders? Whatever it may be. And then I look at what's the demographics of that area that's selling. So is it millennials? Is it retirees? Is it families? And then I would go and build my database and my sphere of influence around that. And I would be at every event. I would make so many lead generation phone calls and I would start building my network from day one of just lead generation and making phone calls. And in the moment I start building a database, then I would find a pain point. What is the pain point? So let's say if it's a, a new builder, right? So new construction. What's the pain point that builders are dealing with and that buyers are dealing with? And how can I solve that problem that's outside the box? And then I would build my name and my, my value around that. That's awesome, dude. That's a great answer. And it's very strategic and, you know, very thoughtful. So good deal. So Terrence, as you know, everybody that comes on the show uh, brings a free gift with them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in your show notes, guys. This is going to be easy. It's hybendigital.com backslash Terrence Murphy. Now it's T-E-R-R-E-N-C. So two E's and two R's. T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E Murphy. <clears throat> um, and uh, I'm going to put it there. I'm also going to put all of Terrence's contact information. You need to follow this guy. He's got 50,000 followers. You might as well be 50,001. You can reach <laughs> out to him and you could say, hey, thanks for sharing. And uh, 
and um, keep in touch with them. So it'll all be on hybendigital.com backslash Terrence Murphy, as, as well as all the links of the stuff we talked about on the show today. So what's your free gift today, Terrence? So my free gift is going back to fundamentals. It's old school. It's no CRM. It's no fancy sheet. We call it a lead generation log. And all it is is just a basic one-page lead generation log, keeping up with your activity. So what I do for my agents when I'm training brand new agents or agents that are trying to grow their business, I make them print this sheet out. And you'll see it keeps up with how many calls that they make, how many appointments that they go on, and then what are their top three lead generation activities. And what are their top three goals and what are they trying to accomplish the next week? And I use it as almost like a lead generation log slash coaching log. So when they come into me and say, I've been here 30 days and I'm not, you know, getting any new business, I say, let me see your lead gen log. And if they say, well, I don't have it. Well, then I know immediately they've not done the work that they told me they were doing. So it's just a simple way to hold yourself accountable. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, definitely. That's a good one. So guys, I'm going to put that in Terrence's show notes. I'm also going to put it in the agent success toolbox which you can find by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or just texting the word toolbox to 444-999. Uh, Terrence, uh, this has been a blast. I'm a forever in, co- what is it, College Square? College Station. College, College Station, Texas. Station, Texas. <laughs> I will definitely uh, look you up. We get together and break some bread. Love to, brother. I need to bring you down an Aggie game. It's an experience you'll never forget. 110,000 people rocking at the same time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, see you later, brother. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, And we have a lot of communications and questions about the show. And I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.